Once upon a time, in the attic of a big green house, lived the Nibble family. No, not a family of humans, but a family of mice. The Nibbles were a very proud bunch. You see, they were no ordinary mice. Each of them always had great ideas to better their lives. How about we build our own kitchen and and we go buy our own food from the market? Oh yes, that's right. That will be so much fun. I have a better idea. How about we open our own supermarket? We will make huge profits and buy this house. Oh yes, that's right. That will be so much fun. But that's all there was to these ideas. Mere words. Attention everyone. The lady human and her husband invited some guests for dinner today. And we all know what that means. We have ourselves a feast! A feast! I thought he was going to say a party. A feast is so much better. I can already taste the food. Great! This means I can have your share. I know, I know. We all are very happy about this. But we must do this well. After all, these humans are mighty beings who can catch us in no time. <laughs> That's right. I am joking. Humans can never catch us. <clears throat> but, but, we have to be cautious. Now, Tom and I will hide behind the fridge. As soon as it gets dark, we will signal you all to come up. Marlin left with Tom to hide behind the fridge. On his way, he told Tom about the idea Jerry Nibble came up with. You know, Tom, Jerry back there was talking about declaring war on humans. This whole planet can be ours. Wow. That's Jerry, I tell you. He is so strong. Did he explain how, though? Uh, no, actually. We never got to that part. I am sure he will think of something. Oh, absolutely. We nibbles are so smart. As it grew dark in the big green house, Marlin and Tom signaled the other mice. And there it was. All sorts of food lying on the big wooden table. Yummy! Yeah! Wow! Oh. All the mice enjoyed their feast. Oh, I am never eating again. <laughs> the wisest member of the Nibble family was Papa Mouse. As all mice lied down with their heavy stomachs, Marlin walked towards the corner of the attic to meet Papa Nibble. Hello, Papa. Why weren't you at the party today? Uh, I am getting old for parties now, my son. I've got to watch what I eat. I ate what little Sammy brought me from up there, but why aren't you asleep? I am too excited to sleep. We won our eating battle against the humans today. So I was thinking about Jerry's idea to declare war on humans. Declare war on humans? Are you out of your mind? No, it is a great idea. It's a useless idea. Uh, why are you always so dim uh, demo, demotivating? Yes, yes, that's the word, demotivating. I am not demotivating you, my child. All I am saying is that an idea, no matter how big, is useless if nobody can act upon it. Only because we have big ideas doesn't mean we are intelligent and brave. But our family is intelligent. You will see, Papa. We will declare a war on humans and we will win. Marlin was really confused. 
He didn't understand how can having a big idea not be called intelligent. The next day, as the lady human entered the kitchen, she was shocked. <gasps> Honey, will you come down here, please? What happened? Did you eat all the leftover food last night? What? No, not at all. I brushed my teeth and went straight to bed. Now, don't you lie to me. I remember there was a lot of food on the table last night, and all of a sudden, in the morning, it's gone. You know you have a diet to follow. That's it. You will only eat fruits today, nothing else. But, but I didn't do it. Stop lying. But I am not lying. I didn't even look at the food. Humans had no idea about the mice in their attic. Every time some food was left out, the mice would eat it, and the lady human would blame her husband. Then one day, as Marlin and Tom were nibbling on a piece of bread, Marlin heard something strange. Wait, do you hear that? Ah, that must be the neighbor's cat, Snuggles. Yuck. What kind of a name is Snuggles? That cat does not look snuggly at all. And how do these humans find cats cute? Cats are monsters! Monsters! Listen carefully. That's not Snuggles. That's someone else. And it's getting closer. Marlin and Tom rushed to see what was going on. No, no, no! This cannot be happening! They got a cat! A cat! A C-A-T cat! Oh my god! Oh my god! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! Tom, I am dying! All right, all right. Remember our mindfulness training. Feel the emotion. Observe the back of your hand. Now, what are you mindful about? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right, this should work. Observe the back of your hand, because once the cat smells us, there will be no hand! This is a disaster! Who gave them this stupid idea of bringing a cat home? I mean those big, furry, whiskery creatures! They have whiskers, it looks so weird! Hair strands oddly placed beside their mouth! Uh, Marlin, uh, we have that too. Whose team are you on, pal? We need to call for an urgent meeting. How could they do this to us? We got here first. This is our house. Okay, maybe we are overreacting. Not all cats eat mice, right? Maybe this cat is a vegetarian. Maybe she eats grass. This is so stupid! I say we live the way we always have, with no fear! Yes, I agree! Yeah! yeah. That's right! Yeah, yeah, yeah! All right. He is right. This is our house. We came here first. Let us shoo away this furry little creature! And thus it was decided. The mice will continue to live as they did. They will face the mighty animal. The mice began to wander around, a little scared, but brave. But things didn't go as planned. It was breaking the family. Slowly, the mice of the Nibble family began to leave the big green house. No, guys, we are family. We can do this. Uh, come on, Marlin. Let's face it. She is a cat, and we are mice. She will never let us live in peace here. It was a good stay in this attic while it lasted. We will never forget our days here. The family was shrinking. With each passing day, the fear of the cat was growing deeper amongst the nibbles. They started leaving the attic one by one. Stuart the dancer. Jenny, the smart one, Chomp, the chewer, all had left. <sighs> the chasing continued. No matter how careful the mice were, the cat could always find them. Day by day, it became dangerous to bring food. That's enough! 
We have to do something about the cat now. I need ideas. Come on. The Nibble family is famous for coming up with great ideas, right? Ugh. Not again. Me, me, I have an idea. Why not go and complain to the humans about the cat? We can tell them that she is the one finishing all the food. What? That is a good thinking. But the problem is that humans aren't educated enough to understand what we have to say. Yeah, right. That's the problem. Come on, churn those little nibble brains of yours. I got it. If you think about it, the real problem is that we can't see the cat coming, right? I mean, one minute we are doing our mice business of nibbling and all, and suddenly this thing, like, jumps out of nowhere. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. That's so true. So true. It happened that day while I was reading that, that recipe on the counter. Oh, uh, who are you kidding? We all know you can't read. You were looking at the she-mice in the garden. Quiet, everyone. Yes, Sammy, you were saying? Yo, so what if we do something that would let us know where the cat is all the time? So if she is in the room with the human lady, we can snack in the kitchen. Mmm, makes sense. But how will we know that? Um, let's bell the cat. Huh? huh? What? What? Bell the cat. I mean, um, <clears throat> I don't want to be a spoiled sport here, but who can we sell the cat to? I mean, who will buy her from us? No, no, not Belle. Belle. Let's put a bell around her neck. That way, it will ring every time she moves. So whenever we hear the bell, we will know she is around. <laughs> she will come sniffing for us, and we won't be there. I would love to see the look on her face. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That is what I call a smacking idea. You deserve the biggest piece of pie for that. The biggest. Yay! Yay! Yeah! We will finally be living in this house without fear. This is the best idea. Yeah. The one who's left are going to be so sorry. We won't run away. This is our house. I am so proud of you. You know what? Your idea should be honored, Sammy. I thus declare this day in the history of the Nibble family as Bell the Cat Day. Yay! Bell the Cat! Bell the Cat! Bell the Cat! Bell the Cat! Bell the cat. Bell the cat. Uh, may I ask a very silly question, though? I am just an old mouse trying to catch up with the newer generation. You know, pardon my slow speed, but is everyone sure about this idea? Of course we are. What, you think we would cheer without thinking this through? Come on, Papa. We are not the normal mob who would just follow through without thinking. Yeah, we are the kind of mob who doesn't... Follow without thinking, I guess. Very well, then. I have one question. Who will bell the cat? Who will bell the cat? Yeah, I mean, someone will have to go there and put the bell around the cat's neck, wouldn't they? Who will do it? There was pin drop silence. The mice looked at each other, hoping someone would volunteer, but no one did. Well, Jerry could do it. I mean, weren't you thinking of declaring a war on humans? <laughs> I mean, I I say let's uh, start with the cat. What? No, I mean, I would have, but I need to live to lead the army to declare the war, right? I mean, did you see the cat's teeth? <clears throat> 
You! You are a leader! Why don't you do it? What? No, I mean what? What would you all do if anything is to happen to me? I... I can't do that to you. Somebody else do it. Come on, tell me, who will bell the cat? Nobody was ready to risk their lives. Neither Jerry nor Marlin himself. After all, it was one thing to say something brave and another to actually do it. And no one from the Nibble family was brave enough to put a bell around a cat. They all wrapped their things up and left the attic and thus the big green house was free. An idea, no matter how big, is useless if you can't act upon it. The end.